Exercise 6. Modeling a signet ring. In this example, we'll use Rhino's NURBS surfacing commands to create the main shape of an object, in this case a signet ring, then convert the surfaces to T-splines, combine them together, and add symmetry to finish the model. We begin by sweeping some NURBS surfaces from curves. Use the sweep to rails command for the two side surfaces then the sweep one rail command for the top. Since these are untrimmed NURB surfaces, we can convert them to T-splines. However, before we convert them, it is always a good idea to rebuild the surfaces to get a more uniform patch layout. This is important because we will then have a better experience pushing and pulling the surface grips inside T-splines. One important question is, how many points should I have in my rebuilt surface to have an optimal T-spline? Here's a short geometry lesson to help you understand the answer. T-spline surfaces in Rhino are all degree 3. This means that the minimum point count in the U or V direction is 4. When you convert a surface with 4 points in U and V to T-splines, then you'll get one face in both directions, so one face total. If you increase this to 5 points in U and V, then you'll get 2 faces in both directions, or 4 faces total. So if it's easier for you to think in terms of how many faces are in your model when you convert to T-splines, and you want X faces in your T-spline model, then rebuild your NURB surface to X plus 3 control points in that direction. Of course, you always want to have the minimum number of faces. Looking at these surfaces, I think I can get by with two faces across the narrow way for each of these surfaces. Then, for the top surface, I think I'll need at least three faces around. So to rebuild the top faces to three by two faces in T-splines, this means I'll need six by five control points. With the surfaces on the shank, looking at this one, I think I'll need it at least five faces high to capture the curvature. So I'll rebuild it so that there's eight points in one direction and five points in the other direction. This other surface is about two faces longer, so I'll need seven faces total, and I'll rebuild it to ten by five. Now that we've rebuilt our surfaces, we'll convert them to T-splines. This is a push button exact conversion. Now that we're in T-splines, the next step will be to join together these surfaces to create a smooth interior surface. This is kind of a topological puzzle. What we're trying to do here is to have the isocurves and edges flow well and have four-sided faces in the model as much as possible. We have two general tools at our disposal we can either add faces and geometry to make a bridge or a transition area between the two surfaces, or we can merge or weld geometry from the two surfaces together to collapse the two surfaces. It's not always obvious which is a better approach, and sometimes either one would work. We'll start out by merging these two edges together. Remember, as we learned when making the heart model, when you merge, you can either have the two edges both move and meet in the middle, or you can pull one edge to the other edge. In this instance, we'll pull the first to the second, since the top curve is more important to the shape of the model. To do this, run the TS Merge command, select the first edge, hit Enter, then select the second edge, and hit Enter to move the first edge to the second edge. Now that we've made this merge, you can see that the model actually looks worse. There are creases shooting through the model. This is normal since you now have naked edges cutting into the model. Once we resolve those, the model will smooth out again. Let's switch to box mode to get a better look at the topology here. Now we actually have a pretty straightforward way to finish this off. You can see that we have a gap that can be filled by two four-sided faces. We can fill this gap with the append face command or also with the bridge command. We'll use the bridge command to bridge the edges together with one segment. 
In the heart ring model, we use the bridge command to bridge faces. You can also bridge edges, and we'll do that here. Now when we go back to smooth mode, by running the smooth toggle command, you can see that everything is nice and smooth now. We'll go ahead and run the TS make uniform command to make things even smoother. Now that we've got the main part of the ring done, it's time to fill in the top. Our goal is to create one-fourth of this ring and then to apply symmetry. So we need to fill in the rest of this quarter of the top. And we'll need to, of course, do this with the T-splines commands instead of the Rhino commands. So to do this, I'll start by extruding a face, since it's easy to do that and keep it parallel to the world axis. This leaves us with another four-sided gap, which we will fill with the append face command. Now that we have a quarter of the ring done, it's time to apply symmetry. However, my edges are sloppy and they don't have a crisp symmetry line. So we need to use the rhino set point command to line up both edges of the model. Now to apply symmetry, we will be using axial symmetry and apply it in two parts. First, we'll apply it in one direction, just clicking two points for the symmetry plane. Then we'll run the symmetry command again and apply it in the other direction. Now we have symmetry in both the X and Y axes. We can continue to tweak the model if desired and it will stay unified and smooth. There's one final piece to making this a watertight solid to close up the inside of the ring. We can do this with the bridge command. We'll select the edges to bridge and make sure that we have one segment as the option in the bridge command line. Finally, we can run the TS make uniform command to relax everything and we have our completed ring. We can continue to tweak and push and pull in T-splines and the symmetry will update in all four directions. Finally, we can convert to NURBS to add additional details or to print the model.